Today I'm talking to Jan and Leo of Coco Rose. Jan and founded the business back in 2007. They make beautiful, super comfy and unpretentious footwear and have recently started expanding their line of accessories. Hi, Jan. -Ann. Hello. Um, would you like to start by telling us a little bit about more about you and Coco Rose? Yes, so I, well, I mean, following your wonderful introduction there. So I'm Jan Ann. Um, started the business in 2007 so it was very much um, a foldable footwear brand when I initially started because I was commuting into London I love heels we were wearing them way more often than we are today um, and you know I was just like teetering around <laughs> into work with them um, and they just absolutely wrecked my feet so I had this wonderful brainwave where I thought how how brilliant would it be if women had a pair of shoes that they could fold up stick into the handbag when they didn't want it and then when they needed to wear something comfortable um, but still look flattering as well they could just pull it out slip it on and off they go mm. I think one of the things for me was living in London you know I was I was leaving home first thing in the morning and then getting home quite late at night and you can't be on your feet and heels all day like that it's just not possible well maybe some women it's possible but for me it wasn't possible so it was very much this kind of brain wave that I had where it was like this is amazing and if it doesn't exist I've got to create it and lo and behold it didn't exist and so when I told my other half that I was going to do it <laughs> He thought I was a nutter, um, <laughs> but was very supportive and here we are. So, um, I mean, as I say, you know, that was way back in 2007. So when I started, it was very much, uh, Gareth is just pulling out the measuring tape there. Sorry, that was okay. probably not what you needed on the record. Um, so when I started back in 2007, as I say, it was very much a foldable shoe brand. And then we started going to um, a lot of the shows overseas. So we were doing back-to-back -back shows like in Milan and, um, gosh, um, Dusseldorf in Germany and Paris and Las Vegas, all sorts of different shows. And it was, you know, it, it was... It was amazing because it was just like it was so exciting and so exhilarating and it was kind of like the next big thing you know everybody wanted it and at that time it was very much about right how can we push ourselves further how can we continue to pioneer this category of shoes that never existed before yeah so i created a range of um flats all leather but they would also fold. So I kind of took that concept of a foldable shoe and then turned it on its head. So made a shoe that was foldable. So it was much more about your everyday wear shoe that if you're traveling or something, you know, you needed something to pack up for, then you, you could take that as well. And, and from there, we started to create this incredible brand, which was all about innovation and pioneering this footwear category. And we did all sorts of things like foldable loafers and foldable trainers and foldable boots wow. and it got to a stage where it was like this this is great this is fantastic but do you think maybe we should try trainers because at that time trainers were just about starting to take off I think this was like 2010 or something like that and all the shows were just like filled with trainers I mean you would go from stand to stand it was just trainers everywhere and then we held off for a while because we didn't want to confuse the brand and to confuse the customer um, because I think especially when you're a starting brand I think it's really really important to have like that um, a real DNA uh, that real footprint in terms of who you are what you do and what you're about mm -hmm. um, but then I think it you know, as we developed over a number of years, we were able to expand into that, in, into the trainer category. And I think it was perfect for us, right time, right place. I was actually pregnant with Ellen. So um, 
it was it was great for me i was literally wearing them non-stop and so i as the customer was basically yeah testing them mm. and i think that's really important as well in terms of like being the designer but also being able to be really sure about yes that is a product it is comfortable because at the end of the day that's what we sell we sell com yeah. comfort and style and it's it's got to come down to the fact that yes it's comfortable that's why we've got this loyal customer who keeps coming back and back and back again but she loves the brand she loves the comfort she loves the designs but if one of those falls apart well, yeah. forget it right yeah. so I was I was wearing them and it was I was testing them and that's when I was saying to Gareth we've got to do this because I am literally living in them I mean I was pregnant out here and it was just like I was just walking constantly oh. with it so with the shoes not with not just the bum um so it was it yeah and, and then that's when we said right okay let's go into trainers let's do it let's expand our product range and as I say you know right time right product we were at that right moment in our journey to be able to take on a new category yeah so um so we we yeah so from that and then of course what's happened recently well corona's hit hasn't it <laughs> Oh gosh. And so, you know, we've had to sort of look at how we've oppositioned everything again. We've, we've re-looked at all sorts of different strands. We've re-looked at our product categories. Um, we've introduced face masks, which was the first kind of accessory that we, that we introduced to the range. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable in terms of um, the response that we've had from it. Um, and this really kind of opened the door for us to say, actually, you know, we've built up the business, the brand for a number of years now. We believe we're at that point where we can now expand that product category even more to avoid any potential confusion. So rather than people saying, oh, my gosh, why are you suddenly doing face masks or anything like that? It was it became like, oh yeah, Coco Rose are doing face masks, you know, so, so then it's a very different take on what a brand can deliver. Um, and so from the face masks, actually, we then started doing these out and about kits, which we create these, a beautiful sort of gift set where it's like um, a hand sanitizing spray and a hand lotion with a face mask of choice, all in a lovely little pouch. And then from that, we've we've then developed into saying, okay, from an accessory point of view, what's our next step then? So I've recently been working on a range of um, beautiful illustrations that we're going to print onto canvas bags. So it's just kind of expanding. And I think, you know, coronavirus has been a really interesting time for us because, you know, I think being an online business first, um, that was really important for us because we didn't have a shop. We didn't have a bricks and mortar where suddenly it was the stress of having rent and rates and this and extra staff in the shop or anything like that. Um, and it just kind of opened up or we, we felt that we should try and open up different opportunities. Um, and I think with coronavirus, you know, we felt, especially with the face mask, we, ve we very much at the beginning and still now feel we shouldn't be profiteering out of face masks. So we, from the very, very early days, we started working with a charity. We chose the Honeypot Children's Charity, very much because um, we have a young daughter, Ellen, she's two. Mm -hmm. And it was about saying, you know, these children who are between five and 12 years old, they're young carers. You know, and the mental stress that they have with coronavirus is massive. The impact on them will last a lifetime, probably. And so we wanted to partner with a charity that were, that meant something to us. So we partnered with them. And to date, we've been able to raise over £19,000 for them, which has been incredible. Mm. Um, but actually, before the face mask, we actually um, had our rainbow trainers. So when... When all the um, rainbows 
Do you remember all the rainbows were in the windows of the houses? And Ellen and I would go for um, walks around our local neighbourhood, Muswell Hill, in, in North London. And it was very much like, oh, what are all these rainbows? Um, and what's going on with them? And doing a bit more research behind it. And then we would draw our own rainbows at home. And then that was that was the inspiration for me to say, actually, we can do more with this. Yeah. And I put our rainbow onto one of our trainer designs. And that's how it all started. And that's kind of what kickstarted the Honeypot Children's Charity um, project and then came in the face mask. So that was a kind of like to follow. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have rambled. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I was just going to. I was I wanted to kind of go back to the beginning when did you do you have a background in sort of fashion and design so when you when you first had that idea that yes wow I need to do something with these foldable uh, shoes did you well, know where to start or I mean what, um, what ish I mean my my background is in new product development mm -hmm. so I mean I did food science at university so a completely different yeah. field um, so I approached this very methodically, very scientifically, and having my background in new product development, which was very much in the food industry, I looked at this in terms of, yeah, well, what's the difference? I'm just creating a new product, whether it's shoes or food or whatever it may be. Mm. I did put myself um, through London College of Fashion in the evenings and on the weekends. And I did a number of different courses there because I just felt that to be taken seriously, yeah, I kind of needed to know a little bit about the the industry and how it kind of worked. But to be honest, I I was, um, you know, I, I was so interested in it anyway that where we used to work, um, I say we because Gareth and I used to work together okay. pre Coca Rose, so we were both in the food industry. And we were in this in this uh, food manufacturing company that was on a um, what would you call it like a, um, a a business estate kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And one of the companies, pretty much right opposite us, was a fashion company, and they made the most incredible bags and coats mm. and all sorts of clothing and everything for high end fashion designers. And I would literally go in there on the weekends and help them so I I mean I knocked on their door one morning I think it was like seven in the morning or something before I got into work and I was like listen I'm really interested in learning about fashion manufacturing can I come and spend some time with you you don't need to pay me or anything I'm just I'm just here to sort of observe and learn they looked at me a bit weirdly, like, okay, here's a here's an odd one. I said, but no, but I, I work over there, so I'm not like some really random person, right? <laughs> um, so so they welcomed me in eventually, and um, I learned a lot from them. And in fact, they then were the ones who made our little purses that our shoes would fold into. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when um, when I when when uh, from my first production, like going back now, thinking about when we got the shoes made, I was so determined not to tell the factories who I was working with what my shoe concept was, because I thought they're so much bigger than I am. And if I give this away, I'll never, ever be able to forgive myself for it. Yeah. So I used to say to them, oh, yeah, just. I, I just need it to be that way because they'd always ask, why do you want a split sole? Why does it need to be this way? And I just said, just, I just need it that way. So they'd send it in. And then when it, when it got in, Gareth and I would then sit and literally fold every single pair. And we put them into these amazing leather purses that this company who was right opposite us in the food industry would make for us. So it was nice that I started, you know, from a knock on the door they kind of became our supplier in that sense yeah. um but yeah so so going back to your question in terms of did I have any experience with it no not really um, I kind of just dove head first into it but I built it up as I went along and I think if you're passionate about something if you really want to learn 
you know, I think you'll always mm. find um, somehow to, yeah. to gain that experience. And I always think there's no better experience than on the ground, is there? I mean, no, you're literally no, 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 in the factories, yeah, you're yeah. working with yeah. the, you know, at the trade shows. I when I first went to the first trade show, I didn't really know how it worked. I kind of had an idea, but I remember like doing up all the sort of, um, uh, all the, the documentation, the pricing and everything beforehand thinking, yeah, all right, we'll just give this a go and see if it works, you know, and it, and it did. I mean, there were a few things to iron out, but it, it, it worked eventually and you kind of just learn as you go. So, so I, your, I don't, sorry, was that your, I'm just, you're going to trade shows. I was going to ask you when you first sort of launched the business, how, how did you get your name out there? So was your, was your first strategy to just go to the trade shows and find people to retail your products? Well, was it, was I, it... well I, I actually launched online. Yeah. So um, in, in 2008, I think it was, is when the website went live. Um, so I, that, that, and from day one, I had, I remember the first order that came in and I almost couldn't believe it because it was so exciting. Oh, I, I can remember my, I can still remember my first order in about 2003. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, isn't it? That ping that goes off and it's like, oh, well, happy dance. Someone's, someone's <laughs> actually put their faith in me, you know? And I think that's the thing that you kind of learn and like you really appreciate as the years go by. It's like that, it's that trust that people are parting with their hard-earned cash and they're trusting in you. And, and that's one of the most amazing things that I think I've taken on this whole journey or from this whole, yeah. whole journey. Um, so, yeah, so I started with the website and then... Um, how did, how I, did you get people to your website? What, what was your... I mean, you must have had some kind of... Obviously, if, if you had somebody come, people coming to buy, you must have not just kind of open the website and have it sitting there no what, so what to so at the very 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 beginning I sent out um a little survey to to friends and asked friends to pass it on to, uh, to uh, at least another two friends mm -hmm. so I had already built up a little database I guess of yeah. um client customers who were potentially interested in this concept so and I kept them updated there was no social media back then, right? Though we have to remember, there was no Facebook, there was no Instagram, there wasn't a place where I could share my journey of all of this. Yeah. It was literally through email and word of mouth in terms of like, this is what I'm doing. And I would keep everyone updated in terms of, oh, you know, the, um, the, uh, the whatever, we've got five styles coming in, they're landing on whatever data is. And it was quite exciting in that sense. And so those first orders came from that group oh, that's okay. um, yeah. and then but but at the same time the guys that I was working with who did my website they were PPC people so very quickly they were saying like oh you know you should put some budget behind um and and try and get and see whether or not you know you can get some clicks and we can try different things the funny thing was when I when I think back foldable shoes was so I mean from a cost per click point of view it was nothing and and like, Gareth and I laugh about this he was looking for. I know we're like hello why didn't we just put thousands into it but um yeah but yeah how things have changed right but anyway yeah. um it, it was really interesting and, and then gradually gradually that's how we did but also the other thing that was absolutely clear to me from day zero was press so again pre-social media days pre-social advertising days how are you going to get your brand out there and for me it was all about working with um working with the press so i very quickly um, got a PR agent on board who actually we still work with to this day um, and we're basically like right let's target um, the glossy magazines the publications and I remember that very first um, article that we had it was on Marie Claire 
do they even exist anymore today? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> one of the glossy <laughs> magazines, Marie Claire had it. And it was like that day was just suddenly like, wow, that's Coco Rose in one of the top glossy magazines. That was so exciting. But, but the point is that that was, it, you know, you asked about strategy in terms of how did you, how did I get the brand out there? And it was very much about, about that and yes it was expensive yes there was a lot of money that had to be spent on this and did I have that income coming in no I was still working full time mm. um, so I was basically subsidizing all of this through my pay I mean it was crazy yeah. but there was a passion there was a drive there was a you know there was a there there was there was the belief and that determination that this was going to have this one day I would be able to have this as my full-time job yeah and for me yeah, that is kind of yeah, yeah. And for, for me it was I just like you, that's what I'm doing yeah so got, the fact that you have that passion just kind of makes up yeah for, you don't always have enough hours in the day and keeps you going and that that's that really does it's oh gosh with it was else. adrenaline I would wake yeah. up at like I don't know what time in the morning um just to try and get stuff done before going off to work um I was working at Virgin Trains actually, um, is how I met Catherine who introduced me to yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I was working at Virgin Trains and actually what was really interesting about that was um, the, the, the man himself, I mean, Richard Branson was very, very supportive in terms of me doing this. I guess from an entrepreneurial perspective, um, he encouraged it mm -hmm. and I remember his fantastic wonderful lovely wife Joan um, you know she bought the shoes as gifts for her team um, one Christmas and it was just so nice you know they didn't have to do that they really didn't but they did and then the other thing was they um, Virgin Group had a magazine, like a, a whole sort of um, internal magazine, but it went to all the different Virgin Groups. And they, um, they basically got me to be featured in that magazine and to talk about Coco Rose and how I was doing this in my spare time while still having my job as new product development manager at Virgin Trains. Okay. Again, they didn't have to do that, but it was it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, actually, I'm working for an entrepreneur here, you well, know, he understands. Yeah. who understands. Yeah. And I, I stuck I stuck at it for three must. It was three and a bit years that I did that, that I was working all hours, burning the candle at both ends, I guess. Um, but I believed in it and I felt that it was the right thing to do and I couldn't leave yet because the business hadn't built up to a stage where it was self-sufficient in any way I was still having to pay for PR I was still having to pay for a lot of things um and but but then um but then Virgin Trains went through the whole um government uh what do they call it re-franchising thing and then there was a chance for me to take redundancy. And I remember thinking, it's now or never. It's, I've got to do this now. And that day, I so clearly remember it. I got on the bus to go back home. It was about midday and I rung Gareth and he goes, where are you? I was like, I'm on the bus coming home. He goes, you didn't, you didn't thinking that I had actually given in my resignation. And I was like, well, I had a choice. I could either take redundancy or stay on. So I took redundancy. So I did have a little bit of money to be able to, you know, see me through in terms of, um, and, and, and it, in fact, it was, it was money enough to see me through to the summer. And that's when I thought, do you know what? The weather is good. I'm going to really try and make a go of this. If it doesn't happen by summer, forget it. I can go and find something else, yeah. but I've got to give it a go. And, uh, and, and yeah, and here we are. We haven't, <laughs> haven't had to go and get another job yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you will not need to go and get another job either. No. <laughs> on the website, I've seen the products. I've looked at them. They are, they are beautiful. And thank you. Um, yeah, that whole the whole idea, the, the whole concept of the fold. And when, when you think about it now, it kind of makes so much sense. You think, well, duh, well, of course you'd need that. I know. But like like you say, at the time, it was so innovative because somebody just hadn't put that, those, put the two and two together and say, well, just have a pair of folding shoes that you can slip with your handbag. Because I mean- I, I think what people that, really loved feet. about it. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think the thing, I think the whole concept that people just loved was the fact that it wasn't just a pair of it's, I, said, I should say it's not just it's not just a pair of shoes it's a pair of beautiful shoes that are comfortable but they fold and then they go into the little pouch mm. and then in the pouch in the back of the pouch there's another bag so if you're wearing heels then you can put your heels into the bag and then carry those oh, everything yeah. was so thought out because I was the customer you know and and because I needed something like this I was constantly thinking, how can I make it better for me? If I was to just, you know, have a pair of shoes that would fold, it'll almost be like, but then what do I, what do, I do with this then? You don't want to put digital you know, in your handbag. It, exactly, and it's, like, it's kind of like, un, yeah, you know, unfinished. unfinished. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it was, it's so important. And I think, um, you know, often when it's your own, when, when an entrepreneur comes and does an idea, out based on an, their own need I think this is where you get a very beautiful finished concept yeah. because you need it you're the customer you know exactly what it is that you're looking for what it needs to be when you finish producing yeah, yeah. So, so yeah talk, talking about I mean you mean obviously you've you've had the entrepreneurial journey um what do you find is the hardest thing for you running the business and is that the same now as it always has been or is that something that kind of changes as, as the company? you know I think priorities change um so I had Ellen two and a bit years ago and honestly time is so precious now yeah um you know she's in nursery three days a week so I've got her two days honestly it's like you're sort of um yeah there's just not enough time you know I remember pre-Ellen days Gareth and I would be in the office till I don't know 10 at night sometimes you know not thinking twice about it whereas now it's it's not it's not possible so priorities do change and I think you know especially when I I, I think it's it's very hard and I, and I don't mean this as in like only for women but obviously I, I, you know I I talk from a woman's perspective in terms yep. of when you have a baby it's suddenly it's like oh wait hang on a second I know that Coco Rose I know that you're my baby as well but actually <laughs> yeah. I I might have to just close the laptop on you and I know that you're not going to wake up in two hours demanding any milk or anything like yeah. that you know yeah. yeah whereas you can't do that with a real baby so yeah, I, I think very quickly it was very much that priorities have really changed. And for me, I think um, that has been a huge challenge for me in terms of trying to retain what I do in the business, letting go of certain things that I just can't do anymore, and then trying to rejuggle things. Um, but you know what? I think she's made me a better. Uh, she's made me a better person in the sense that um, I can prioritize better, um, and also I think with our customers, it's so relatable. You know, I understand now what our customers go through, um, and you know. Our newsletters, I, I do all of our newsletters, so I write all of them. I, I took it back in house um, from the beginning of last year, so very much from a corona point of view, and, and I've started doing that. And we've connected so much more with our customers in this past year and a bit. Mm. Um, and I think it's very much down to having that personal, real touch, that human, human being. It's not about selling shoes or 
face masks all the time there's a real person behind here you know and yeah. and I think this is what people really love and having Ellen we were doing things like going going to the zoo or going to the gardens or whatever it is and suddenly I could I could take those experiences and share them and I think that's what has really opened quite a lot of um different opportunities for us as well um so yeah so I think very very challenging from a timing perspective but really positive from a relatable um perspective and being able to connect more with customers I love I really love that you've said that because I think it is just too easy to almost hide behind a logo and just want want the ad company and the name and the, the brand as in the image brand to talk for you but as you say it's so important to actually have that personal connection with your customers and that yeah. it does make a difference and then that you know and it's a two-way thing as well isn't it so you yeah. get that feedback from your customers and they get to feel that they really are kind of part of something bigger that's not just as you say not just buying a pair of shoes so I love yeah. I love the fact that you've um, that you've sort of said that. you know I think it's become so much more important in the let's call it the COVID era as well mm. you know when when it first hit I think Gareth and I were very early in terms of getting out there and we just said you know what call us if you want to chat and we opened up the telephone lines, we opened up email, and we bas basically were just like, it doesn't matter if you don't want to buy anything, just ring. Mm. And the response that we had was really heartfelt in terms of, I think customers really appreciated that in terms of, it's not, you know, this is, these are real people behind this brand, you know, and there it's not about having investors who are just, banging on the door saying oh why haven't you hit this number or anything like that no you know this is our business this is we can do what the hell we want with it and actually what we felt was really important especially in those early days of uncertainty was being able to to to, to lend an ear for mm -hmm. people if they were worried or they just needed to chat or whatever it was that they knew that they could pick up the telephone. And it's funny because um, we, I had this great picture of Ellen who was holding a telephone um, to her and I put that onto the newsletters and, and for quite some time. And it was just like, just call us anytime, you know, we're here to, to chat. And yeah, the response was really lovely. And I think this is what has helped us through this particularly challenging year as well in terms of having that human connection as you say it's so easy to hide behind a logo and especially for us you know this logo has been going for 14 years it's been like this global sort of like logo in these amazing department stores in all sorts of different countries all over the world but actually it's just us it's just little yeah. old us you know and it's like there's nothing pretentious here. Just, you know, you telephone and you get through to one of us. Yeah, and I think, lovely. you know, the, the number of people who call up and say, um, you know, you're having a chat and they're saying, oh, um, what's your name? Because I need to make sure that I get through to the right department later if, they, <laughs> if I call back. And it's like, no, no, there's only, there's only us. So don't worry about that. <laughs> it's just us. It's just it's just little old us. So, little old yeah. you. Where, do, where does little old you see Coco Rose being in sort of five years, ten years time? What, what, oh, what's, that, what's that dream vision for you? I don't know is the real honest answer <laughs> right now. I mean, everything has been turned on its head, hasn't it, in the last year? For sure. Um, that's that's a that's a very hard question and I honestly I don't know the answer to that what I would quite like to say is that I, I would like to see us you know having um having a bigger connection with our customers um and I'd like I mean everything is measured in Ellen's age by now so she'll be what 
Devon, so going to school, you know, and it's kind of like thinking, okay, how can how can all of that relate in? How, how can it all sort of fit the jigsaw around her? So, um, yeah, I I'd still like to be here. That's for certain. <laughs> I have no doubt you. That, that'll be a start. <laughs> Honestly, this past year, anything's possible. So, um, yeah. Is true? I suppose that's, that's a very good point, actually, because you can't, as, as we've seen, when you see some massive retailers just going, uh-uh, that's it, I'm done. Finished. And you're like, yeah. really? You, and I know. So, yeah, you can't take anything for granted at the moment. No. Because it's just... It's and, so and I think that's one of the learnings out of this COVID era, again. It's like, just don't take anything for granted. You know, put your head down, work hard you know be be kind be together be you know share that love in fact those are the three words that we um have been spouting over the past year as well and and actually they mean a lot to us in terms of kindness love and togetherness and the bags that i mentioned to you um where we have the beautiful illustrations on the front and on the back we have those little three words just little just as a tiny little reminder to the wearer you know, so it's just a little message um, as a reminder message for us all. But yes, yeah, so those three words are really key, aren't they, in terms of yeah. what we've come out of, what we will come out of this um, situation with. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think, I, I, I don't know, is the honest answer in terms of whether we will get back into the wholesale game as what we did. Um, you know, that landscape has changed massively. Um, I don't know in five years whether that would recover at all. Um, I would like to, but I just don't know. But so what we would, what we will be focusing on is continuing on our e-commerce journey and trying to sort of um, grow that, I guess, but grow in a sustainable way, yeah. you know, yeah. not in some sort of massive um investor kind of capital funding we've yeah. been down that route before um in fact the funny story that i mentioned to you when i was pregnant with ellen we went and saw these really fancy accountants in in central london and i was feeling really really ropey that day anyway we sat in this in this beautiful board meeting on whatever floor it was amazing i was just green all over but i managed to hold it all together until we got back downstairs to the revolving door and then that was it it was just projectile everywhere <laughs> so yeah uh, that was interesting um yeah. we, didn't we, we didn't get that funding no <laughs> funny that oh well on that happy note <laughs> oh my see the journeys that we've been on jeez yeah um yeah pleasure listening to the to the stories and to listening to your story and um yeah i i i really love how you have emphasized the fact that even what we perceive to be a big brand it, there is still somebody behind that brand and it's lovely to know that you can connect at that personal level with your customers and i think that's so important especially yeah. especially at the moment and just to end up the podcast i just want to wish you so much success um with the brand and with your continued growth and i hope you just kind of continue to get a lot of fulfillment from from working and oh creating. thank you that's so, so nice so that's much. so kind thank you for taking the time to talk to me oh i've loved it <laughs>